Hoffman, however you want to be referred to. We are all gathered again for yet another How to Draw Monday, and this week we have a fan request, one of our biggest fans, he claims to be our number one fan, um, has requested Pikachu, so I'm sure this guy will get used quite a bit on this stream because there's a billion different ways to draw a Pikachu. And also, Nintendo, or actually I guess Game Freaks, hasn't remained consistent in the way they draw Pikachu. So we can actually draw Pikachu in many different art styles and have plenty of content for this, this stream. So this time we're going to go with a more modern style Pikachu. Um, and we're just going to hop right in. So first thing we're going to do today is the basis for almost every drawing. We're going to start with a circle. Well, not every drawing. Every drawing of a character. Let's put it that way. So we've got our circle and then we want a rough midline there. And then we're just going to come in and kind of swoop through here. Nope, I'm missing it already. I find sometimes with this it works better if I go backwards. Normally when I'm doing things like this I come from the top down to get those curves, but I don't know what it is with Pikachu. It seems to work better if I go from the bottom. And then with this one, kind of got some proportion things we got to cover here. So we want another circle down here, but do it really light because it's only a reference. We have to put a triangle in, but we don't want a whole triangle. A triangle actually would like go up into his head like that. We just want a part of a triangle. So I guess something. A rhombus? No, I'm forgetting my art shape names here. It's not a parallelogram because both sides aren't parallel. I think it is a rhombus. I think rhombus is just a shape with four sides without right angles. So, yeah, so we come in, we put this triangle shape down here. We use that to guide where we place his front legs in this pose. Got a Pikachu that we're drawing from the front on. He's just kind of sitting and chilling on the ground here. And then we come up here. And then we get his legs in there. Those are his front legs. We're going to take this triangle and we're going to use it to continue out. And we want to put kind of these half oval shapes here. And those form his back legs. This one is rather hideously misshapen. Let's fix that. And then for his back feet, we come in like that. Now we've got the basic body of our Pikachu. We can start to add in some other details. Now you can either do the eyes first at this point which are right here, or you can do the nose. I mean, it's good to put the eye line in before you do the nose, so you know where to put the nose. And we just go right here. Just a cute little triangle right there. And then, you may not realize it, but Pikachu's eyes are actually a lot further apart than you would at first assume. So they're actually much closer the edge of his face than they are to the center. If you don't do that, you don't end up with a cute looking Pikachu. You end up with one that looks like super creepy. I did some some sketches and if any of you are Patreons and are patrons and get the, uh, the extra content, you'll be able to see them. But I did some pre-sketches to try and get this pose down 
And oh my gosh, some of those were horrifying. <laughs> but now we got our nose set in, we can come in just under that nose. We want to make a little partial W shape there. Give them that cute little animal cat like mouth. Mm -hmm. We're going to come down here. Do that for his mouth and then that. Oh, now you've got most of the face of your Pikachu. And then we're going to come in here and draw some ovals there with his Pikachu cheeks going on. Here's the part that I always struggle with, like always, the proportions for his ears because his ears are really thin but they're huge. So I come in and I try and try and just get to a cute size here. I'm trying to get the same length on both sides can also be a struggle. That's why it's nice that we're gonna do this in pencil first and then come back in pen and marker, I should say. We've got a little ear caps here. And where you might be tempted to make a straight line on there. It's curved because it looks straight on his whole ear. But to get that effect on a rounded surface like this, we got to kind of give it an angle. And then we're bringing his tail. Now his tail in this pose, his Pikachu's got a big tail. But we want to find our focal point here, that center line. Just make an arch out from here. So we're going to bring that arch back down like this. And that gives us a nice sharp end. Now, technically that would end somewhere in here and we would come back like this. But we don't actually have to draw it, so we're just going to leave that there. And then we're going to come through here draw a point. Give the illusion that his tail is continuing back here. And one more tiny point, pointing down towards his butt. Then you see that it's got that lightning zigzag shape going down to his tail end, which would be right around here. You'd think it'd be down here, but he's kind of leaning forward, which means his tail section is going to terminate right about there. So, now, really, the only detail that we have left, other than his, his, uh, I always forget his tail's got that, or does it? No, that's, his, that's at his tail end. See, this is why working in pencil is a wonder. Start adding details that don't exist, and you can just erase them do a better job of that here in a second but you know on stream that looks like it's clean <laughs> and then one of the things I learned earlier doing these practice sketches is that I was making that white highlight on his eyes way too small so this time we're gonna make sure we come back through and really darken that line so we give his eye the right shape There we go. Come back into his cheeks. Give this one a little too large, so we'll shrink that one down a little. And there we are. Okay, other detail we need. So I don't know why this is, but all of the drawings I was able to find Pikachu only has three toes on his back foot, from what I can tell. And then he's got like, between, it depends on who's drawing him, but he's got like five toes up front. So, not sure why he has fewer toes on the back. But he does. So, 
there we have our happy Pikachu. Just look at that happy dude. Isn't he so ecstatic? Actually, you know what? I like that tongue just a little bit bigger. So since this is all gonna be black anyway, or well, that's not gonna be black. So we really do need to make sure we bring that up nice. Right, it's inside his mouth, it's black. Well there, now we have our Pikachu base sketch done. And it's pretty good. So, <clears throat> now we come in, we get our, uh, our Copic Multiliner 0.5. Let me pop that out and get ready to do some highlighting. Just a second here. There we go. You know, the nice thing about doing multi-liners like this, if you're like me and you're very ADHD, you can just come in and I said multi-lining like that's the thing I meant to say outlining. You just come in and do whatever parts you want. You don't have to stay consistent. I mean, it depends on how dark you draw. It might be helpful to build a pattern of like moving from the southwest or southeast corner here and moving up, but eh. I don't draw dark enough to make that an issue. At least not as far as it bothers me. Now with that, I think this is gonna be the hard part because I made it out really messy. At least most of it was in the black part. Got a little bump of something probably underneath here that uh, kind of threw off my, my smooth lining there. You know, I've got to stay in one place because I'm streaming for you guys, so you know I can't move my paper around a lot. I don't have a nice setup for that yet, but if you need to, to get a better position, just feel free to turn that drawing and that paper around so that you can get exactly the best angle to draw what you're doing to do your multi-liner or whatever pen you're using for outlining. Remember on like shapes like this, when you're doing the outline, don't go all the way down, just give that illusion. And then come back with a pop of markers later. And doing some shading, we will improve that shape. So, while I'm sitting here drawing this, did have some bigger plans for today's show because this is our 100th broadcast from the guy who sounds funny media at least on youtube not here on twitch but uh i had busted out my three-dimensional art skills and come up with a intro for the channel but unfortunately when I went to demo it to some of the people I check in on my artwork with 
make sure there aren't any errors, somebody pointed out a really big error. Blatant, obvious, I should have caught it. I misspelled something in our logo. <laughs> so here I was planning to do... Oh, I didn't line this guy. Here I was planning to do this big reveal, make our 100th episode the first one with an intro video, or an intro animation. And you know what? It didn't work out because... Yeah, I spelled it wrong. So, and let me tell you, it takes a while with my computer setup to render 3D images. Well, the 3D animations, I should say. The images aren't bad, but um, to do a full animated intro takes a little bit. Sorry, I'm just letting that multi-liner dry so that we don't smear and smudge it all around. But yeah, so video takes several hours just to do a few seconds of the animation. And I had it totally rendered, had the video ready, everything good to go. Showed it to some uh, some family and friends and they were like, um, you've forgotten S right here in your logo. I was like, dang it, that doesn't work. <laughs> Especially because I now have to adjust the length of the animation. Something, you know, you don't really think about when you do these things at first, but um, adding an extra letter in makes the name longer, which will make the animation seem faster if I keep the same length. So now i got to go back and retool the animation completely. So, like, I almost have to go back to ground zero. That's a little frustrating. So I think we're probably dry enough now to start wiping out our pencil lines without streaking. Did a rather big Pikachu today, so figured I had to bust out the big vinyl eraser for this guy. stuff off of here. Now something I would love to get at some point um, but Japanese manga artists um, I think I've seen some American animators back when you know, pencil and pen were still the Tools of the trade with Disney. Sorry if that shook things up a little bit. Bumped on the tripod there. But uh, and these really nifty feather dusters for getting your eraser dust off of your your drawings. I'd love to get my hands on one when I can afford to. I mean, you can order them online and things, and I'm sure they're not terribly expensive. But you know, the life of a starving artist and everything. Don't really have that option today. My goodness. That was a messy devour today. Now, more so today than in any of the other drawings we've done, we've really got to be careful to get rid of the majority of these erase or these pencil marks on Pikachu because we are going to be working with the most dread color of any semi opaque media. There we go. Oh, missed some stuff down there. We are going to be working with the color yellow. I know that all I've done so far on the channel has been topic in our three whole episodes of drawing here. But uh, in media like colored pencil, yellow's not so bad. But if you're working with acrylic paints, watercolor, Copic markers, um, oh, 
gosh, anything that's really a wet medium, using yellow is a pain. Because if there is anything underneath that can bleed through, it turns whatever you're drawing green. So I don't claim that this is going to be the prettiest drawing of a Pikachu because I'm absolutely convinced that there's going to be some bleed through on this guy at some point. But we're going to try our best with yellow. But yellow is kind of a pain. Um, so if you guys are keeping with the Copic sets and want to know what we're using today, we're using for a, a mid-tone, we're using Y15. That's cadmium yellow. Um, Y13 for the highlights, and that's lemon yellow. Because lemon's delicious. And for the shadows, our dark tones, we're going to go with golden yellow. And for the spots on his face, we are going to do RV29, which is crimson, and RV25, which is dog rose flower, which is an amazing name for a color. Um, and some of you might be wondering why I'm going with the RV scale instead of the R scale. If you know anything about Copic and why the, the numbers have these two letters, or one or two letters at the front, um, it's because with the yellow Pikachu body, if you use a true red Copic, it tilts too close to the orange scale. So it makes Pikachu seem more orange around this area of his face than he actually is. And it also blends that in too much into the other, uh, to the rest of it. They're just too close on the color scale. They're too close with all those hot colors because Pikachu isn't like normally a pure yellow. Most people don't realize it, but he does shift more towards the, uh, the orange side of things than the pure yellow side of things. Um, so because of all that, if we used a different, if we used uh, pure reds instead of red violets, um, his, his cheeks would look really weird. So I've done it before, tried it with some other some other media, and it really doesn't work out great. And then of course we've got our black 100, and we've got a zero, which is colorless blender because we might make some mistakes. And with yellow, this is a, a lifesaver because you can pull up some of that if you go out on the edges and things. Yellows are a light enough color you can get away with pulling that up with the the white there those guys up there so yeah let's just get started with our cadmium yellow now I did a ridiculously big Pikachu here so we're gonna start out with some uh, some just general body fill here just try and get this moving faster No, I'm just trying to get the majority of his body blocked in here. Because up here on his arms, his feet, top of his head and his ears and his tail there, we're going to use our, uh, our highlight color. So I'll leave some space for that. But as the majority of him... This unhighlighted yellow. I'm gonna fill in a bunch of him with this. Now, on my test Copic drawing, I forgot, but you kind of want to leave some space and do a highlight right here on the bridge of his nose. If we had light coming down from here, even here or here coming down, you're going to see a highlight on his nose there. It's just how light works. Let me get all of this. I'm going to set a 
in here. There we have it. We've got a bit of our Pikachu's yellow blocked in here now. Now I try avoid doing the edges with this big tip because it can really, it's not a finesse tool. It's not great for doing edges. It's just great for filling in the majority of space when you have a big picture like this. And you come in like this, and then you hit your edges here with your nice brush tip. Produce a much better look. I don't know if I've mentioned on previous videos, but you note, I always leave the black for last. And part of the reason for that is because I don't want to contaminate the tip of my marker. It's really hard to contaminate Copic markers with other colors, but if any color is going to do it, it's going to be black. You get into your, your Copic and you ruin it. You get all sorts of bleed into there. And so yeah, here we go. Let me slide a bit of them down here. Okay, that's still undone. You know what though? I just realized I've forgotten a color. We have all of our red violets there. We also needed red violet 23 for his tongue. Forgot I had that one on the list. <clears throat> all right, now that I've got most of the yellow in and I see where I want things, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna come in with that lemon yellow. And this is a real subtle highlight. just to convince the eye that things are correct. It's not going to be super noticeable. So on camera, you might even be seeing it and be like, there's nothing happening. Because it just kind of blends in. But it helps convince the eye of three-dimensional shape in a two-dimensional drawing. We actually had a discussion earlier tonight about how there's types of light that our eyeballs can't see. Like we're just not even capable of seeing them. But the funny thing is, is you absolutely notice them when they're not there. If you've ever looked at a photograph that you've taken and compared it to like what you can see with your natural eye, and the photograph just doesn't seem quite right. It's because the camera only picked up the visual spectrum of the human eye. Picked up the light that we can see. And then that's it. But our eyes are actually designed to be able to detect subtle variations in things. So the light that we receive has other elements in it, like ultraviolet and infrared. Oh, dang it. I am going to get in so 
completely forgetting my dark tone down here. So yeah, things like ultraviolet and infrared, we don't actually see. They don't process in our brains as colors. But if they're not there in the image, we definitely notice that they're not. It actually changes how the picture is processed in our brain. So like if you were a mantis shrimp, you could actually see those colors. We only see in three spectrum color. Or I guess it wouldn't be three spectrum, but uh, three base colors in our eyes. I don't remember if our eyes receive cyan, magenta, yellow, or if they receive red, green, blue. But it's one of those three. Or <laughs> one of those three. It's one of those two sets of three. And uh, <clears throat> a mantis shrimp, though. Mantis shrimp doesn't see in those three colors. Mantis shrimp sees in 16. <laughs> 16 different types of light come into a mantis shrimp's eye. It's nuts. So they see in infrared, they see in ultraviolet, I think. I think that's what it was. Just lots, lots and lots of colors in the mantis shrimp's eye. And then they process those differently. Now the funny thing is, even though they can see in all these different spectrums and everything, you'd think, oh, well, they're, they should be great at seeing color. They're actually not. Because all of those, all that color information washing into their eyes, the difference between, like, this yellow and that yellow, or this yellow and that yellow, don't matter to a mantis shrimp. They see so much different light coming in that their brain, their tiny little shrimp brains don't even process all of that different light coming in as different colors. So from what my research has shown, mantis shrimp are actually very bad at uh, telling what colors are. So yeah. definitely interesting to see how the animal world works differently than our perception. We only think of the world as having a certain set of colors and that's it. That's all it will ever have. These other animals in the world are just like, huh, forget that silly humans. We'll see in all these colors. You can see already how this Pikachu's coming along. We're getting there. Nice yellow gradient going on here. Now with his face here, I like to just a little bit of a hint of his jaw shape because he's got you know he's got a little Pikachu snout but it's not like super pointing up I kind of run the shadow up here to imply that he uh, a little bit more going on there come down here and bring this guy up and we need and if we draw this guy side. 
this side's focused in more. And we'll blend that in with our cadmium yellow here in a minute. Thicker highlight there. Just over here we want just a thin line. Nothing too big. Now, normally there'd be a highlight like on this part of his leg, but in reality, it doesn't quite look like it with this drawing, but if you were to take like a three-dimensional figurine of this Pikachu, believe it or not, this is blocking a lot of his back end. So right here, the highlights would actually be back behind his body, back behind his shoulders here, where you can't see. So we're just gonna do this in our Y15, our, our main color. We're not gonna fill in any highlights on his legs here. that come back in here and get some blending done fill in that darker yellow in kind of fill in some of this that regular marker tip didn't do a real thorough job of filling in there. Yeah, I really like Copic markers. Discovered one of our favorite animators, uh, Andy Mation. He does a, uh, like he was one of the animators on The Missing Link the movie that came out, I believe that was DreamWorks. So, a professional animator, and he's got a YouTube channel where he just does flip books, essentially. Actually, no, that's all he does. It's just the Animation YouTube channel, and he just does flip books. Because that's how he got his start as an animator when he was a kid. So, he just made flip books. So, he's got a whole thing. He's got um, products that he's made, like uh, a USB powered miniature light table or light box that you can buy that uh, you can use to and it's made at the perfect size for doing like note card size flip books he spelt sells a flip book paper to go with it all sorts of stuff on his website it's really cool stuff kids and i love him um Love watching his stuff. He does some really cool ones. And he's got a long standing childhood obsession with. Wow. Okay. I know this is live broadcast, so we can't fix this, but I really should have fixed that foot. <laughs> Just to point out some flaws in my own work. That foot and that foot are not the same. This Pikachu has a birth defect. But that's okay. He's allowed to. He is unique and special and perfect the way he is. And blend this guy down just a little more. But yeah, so if you guys get a chance, check out Andy Mation. It's a fantastic channel. He does some amazing stuff. One of my favorite episodes by far recently is apparently his niece and nephew um, enjoy his channel so much that they wanted to do flip books. And so they sent him some flip books and showed them on his channel. Then he got his brother, who was an electrical engineer, to do a flip book with him. And laughably, his brother did a decent flip book. Um, it was all exact and precise because he like he took out all sorts of drawing equipment and drew it up like he was drawing one of his his engineering drawings. So it's like this very mathematically correct flipbook. <laughs> like 
it's not rough in any way shape or form it all looks like perfect lines and it's just it's crazy stuff should probably come back in do just a thin line shadow right there and then this one sends a bit cheap right there which is now that we're further is just glaringly obvious to me So I'm happy to say, though, that without having to, uh, you know, send them to mom, dad, and all the aunts and uncles, that these how to draw videos are becoming some of the most popular videos on our YouTube channel. Just naturally drawing more viewers in than some of our other content, which, you know, makes me happy because I enjoy drawing these things been drawing ever since I was a little kid. Always had markers, paints, something. I was always doing stuff with them. Just a line there. All right, there we go. Now, honestly, I think that came out very nice. Do some more blending of this lemon color here. There we are. Can darken that up just a little bit. Bring those colors together a little more. One of the things I love about these copper markers is that you can just blend them so nicely. It's beautiful just how well they go together. Just any of the alcohol based markers, I guess, not just copper. Weirdly enough, for the longest time, I wouldn't have been able to use these. Because for most of my adult life, I have suffered from an alcohol allergy. It's starting to fade, but even like the vapor, the smell of the vapor used to make me sick. So even opening one of these would have set off a migraine, would have made me sick to my stomach. The airway would have started to close up. But weirdly enough, all of the exposure to hand sanitizer during COVID like the constant, never-ending exposure to hand sanitizer during this whole time, my body seems to have adjusted some. So I don't have bad reactions to alcohol-based products like I used to. Like, I still wouldn't go out and drink anything, but I can open a Copic marker and not start, you know, anaphylactic shock. So it's really nice. Just a little bit of bleed through right there. If not, ah, because I was focusing on talking about it, I did it again. It's not a lot, so it won't really be that noticeable, I don't think. Now we'll come back with our lighter color and darken the main body and kind of blend all this together.
what we really want with these cheeks is a blend of these two. We really want the two colors to go together because that gets us right where we want for his cheeks. So there's our our darker two RVs there, our crimson and our dog rose flower. But our pure pink is the tumbler. And that's looking pretty good. So I think we're at the point now for our final color, like always, the black. in, take that fine little brush tip there and get our corners first, and we can do everything wider. Let's see if his eyes come out looking better this time. So the last time, that was a test sketch. The highlights looked good hand draw or pencil drawn. But then when I outlined them, the outline was so thick. And when I filled it all in, like he had massively dilated pupils. He had been to the optometrist and they'd use that weird pupil dilator to check his eyes. Hopefully none of you in the younger crowd have had to deal with that machine. I know that some of the older people watching will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the thing that like puffs air into your eyeballs and leaves you feeling all weird afterwards. Like one of the major things I love about this Copic black marker is that it's solid. Like you draw it down, once it dries, the color is solid. When I was a kid, one of the things I noticed about black markers, water-based ones, and a lot of alcohol-based ones too, actually, is that your black always has like variation to it, <coughs> which oftentimes makes it appear not black. I'm trying to make a little bit of highlight here on Pikachu's nose. Not a huge amount, but you know, if you ever look at your dog's nose or your cat's nose, it has a little bit of highlight because it's wet. And there we have it, folks. There is... Oh, wait. <laughs> oh. Silly me. I mean, this is a cartoon stylized thing. In reality, I should probably fill this in red. Or something similar because when someone opens their mouth it isn't actually a black hole like this it's just at the very very back but for reasons of a limited color palettes and working quickly we'll just do that and there we have it ladies and gentlemen a Pikachu Which 
is the 17th of 2022 and our signature because we're done we got ourselves a pikachu and once again if you're looking for some things to to do to improve the picture or, or add some more to it than just this some things that i haven't covered here um, you can come in and this will look a lot like the video games actually so it could be a really cool effect but you come in and you run just a little ellipsy a uh, oval down here do that and you can get Sorry, flipping through colors here. Yeah, not that color set either. We want this one. So you can get something like yellow green 13 and then yellow green 17. And you can come in and fill that yellow green 13 through here. And then just come with that sketch tip and do some spikes coming off of here. And that would end up looking like the, uh, I don't know what it is, the, the under spot from Pokemon in the, the old Game Boy games. It's so like the original Diamond and Pearl or Fire Red and Leaf Green on the Advance. Um, you know, because they didn't do the full background, the Pokemon just sits on like a portion of grass, a portion of water. You can do that in here and make a real simple effect that would make it look like it was that if you want to enhance your drawing just a little bit more do something extra um, we're not going to do that because it's going to take more time and i think we're at just about the stopping point that we normally run I'm trying to find my time here yeah yeah we're right around the point that we normally end so there we have it we've got another how to draw video done and out of the way like there's some sort of chore right no i really enjoy doing these so we've got our pikachu done and uh we'll be back tomorrow with some more programming i believe that's comic talk and that would be it for tonight so hope you guys enjoyed and we'll catch you on the next one bye